Hello YouTube, my name is Josh and I want to welcome you to our channel. So today's video is basically a, an answer to a question. So if we take a look at our community comments, BC Productions asks, do you have a video on how to set up Snoost and Parsec together? Kind of confused on how that works and definitely want to give Cloud Gaming a try. Well, that's an excellent question and that's one that we're going to answer today. So let's break it down. We've got five simple steps that you can take to use Snoost and Parsec together to have a really cool cloud gaming experience. So let's jump into step number one. Step one is to download and install Parsec on your home computer. So start off by going to parsecgaming.com and once you get there, click on the download now button. And from here, we're gonna choose Windows 7 64 bits and you'll see that it starts downloading at the bottom of the window. Now this may take just a few seconds once it's done, we're going to click it and launch Parsec to go through and finish our installation. After you finish downloading, it's going to go ahead and open up your installer for you. So go ahead and hit I agree when you're comfortable. And then after it installs for a moment, it's going to ask you if you want to enable controller support. We're going to hit yes. And then after it completes, go ahead and hit close. And Parsec should open automatically after a few moments. All right, now on this screen, if you haven't already created a Parsec account, go ahead and hit the sign up button right here. It's going to walk you through a little sign up wizard where you get to choose your username, a password, and then it may have you confirm your information through email. Now, once you've either done that or you, know, you have an existing account, you can go back to the login screen and you can log in with that existing account. So I'm going to do that for mind. And when you're ready, go ahead and just hit login. Now it will ask you if you want to enable hosting. Now remember we're at home so technically we don't have to do that unless you plan on using this particular computer to stream to something else. In my case I will be doing that later on so I'm going to enable that. And that's basically it for opening up and, and just installing the Parsec app. Step two is to configure your Parsec app that's on your home computer so that you can have a good cloud streaming experience. So go ahead and click on the little gear button and then choose settings. Now, these are just gonna be some basic recommended settings that you can try as a starting point. Lowest latency tends to be a good starting point because that's gonna prioritize how your controller feels or your mouse and keyboard feels as you stream. So that's a good point to start with. Now, if you have a dedicated graphics card in your home computer, you can leave this on accelerated. If you don't, so if you have an integrated card like an Intel card, you can try software and that'll give you good results. But if you do have a, a built-in card, you want to stick on uh, accelerated for that setting. Now bandwidth limit, you're welcome to try auto. Now if you know that you're trying to stream at a lower bandwidth for some reason, you're welcome to tweak this. So you can go through here, just make sure that whatever number you pick for this does not exceed your download internet speed at home. So let's say that my download speed at home was uh, 15 megabits per second. I wouldn't want to choose 20. You'd want to start with 15 and see what you get. But for most people, auto is going to be just fine. Um, same thing for streaming resolution. Usually auto detect is just fine, but if you have a reason to try a lower resolution, so let's say that you're streaming to a mobile device that only supports 720p, you could do that. You could choose 720p as an example, or if you have another reason. For most of us, auto detect is gonna be just fine, so we can just click off of that. Now, refresh rate, I'd recommend leaving that on match. Um, echo canceling is completely optional. If you're planning on sharing your gaming session with somebody else, meaning that somebody else is gonna be maybe your controller number two on your game. You can go ahead and turn this on so that you can voice chat with your friend without getting any kind of feedback from the stream, so that'll help. Windowed mode, we recommend leaving on borderless for best results. VSync, I recommend leaving on in the, in the Parsec client. That means that you do not need to turn on VSync in the games that you play, so this is helpful. Um, immersive mode, you can leave off. And then overlay is just your personal preference. So if you do leave it on, you're gonna have a little button at the top of the screen during streaming that you can click on to close your session or tweak settings. I prefer to personally do that from my keyboard, so we're gonna hit off and that's just my personal preference. You can really pick whatever you want from there. Our next step is to set up Snoost. 
So go ahead and open up your web browser again. Now for this step, we do recommend that you use Google Chrome because ultimately we're going to be installing a Google Chrome extension that's used to power Snoost. So in your Chrome browser, go ahead and go to snoost.com. Now if this is your first time using Snoost, feel free to go up here and sign up. If you do, you're going to get a three-day free trial that you're welcome to use to kind of check the whole thing out and see if it works well for you. Once you have done that and you've created an account, scroll down to the very bottom of the Snoost website. We're going to click on Chrome extension and then we're going to download that extension. So click that and we're going to hit keep because it's you know, unknown to Google and that's safe to do. Now if you look here, it gives us some quick instructions. So it says go to this website. So we're going to go ahead and copy that and we're just going to paste it and go and if we go back to those instructions it says in your browser and then drag and drop your downloaded file onto the extensions tab so here's what that looks like I'm going to open up my downloads folder this is the file that we just downloaded if we go to that extensions tab all we're doing is we're going to drag this and drop it right there and it may take a moment it's going to say add the app and we're going to go ahead and add it and so that adds it as a Chrome app. And that's basically all that you need to do to sign into Snoost and basically just activate it and get it set up. And our next step is going to be actually configuring Snoost. Now for the sake of time, I went ahead and cut ahead just a little bit. So we launched the Snoost app, we let it load. Um, it takes between 10 and 15 minutes to start up Snoost and that's the reason that we're cutting ahead. But once it does load, you're gonna be presented with this screen. So this is the Snoost desktop. And this is where um, a step begins. So I wanna kinda of clarify what we're doing and how often you need to do this. So everything we've done up until this point is a one-time setup. So you're basically getting everything going on your home computer. Now this part portion is something that you have to do every single time that you use Snoost, if you wanna use Parsec with it. So here's the key. Snoost has two drives on your cloud computer. There's a C drive and then a D drive. The C drive is where Windows is installed and that drive gets erased every single time that you exit your streaming session, so every time you leave Snoost. When you install Parsec on the Snoost computer like we're about to do, Parsec has to be installed on the C drive because it puts files in a couple special places on that drive. So every time you stop streaming with Snoost, you lose your Parsec installation. So this step is something that you have to repeat. Um, Right after you boot up your Snooze computer, you're going to open up your Chrome browser, and this can take just a moment, and we're going to basically kind of copy what we did on the home computer for Parsec. So we're going to ParsecGaming.com. We're going to hit the Download Now button, and then choose the Windows 7 64-bit package just like we did before. Now this take, may take just a minute or two to basically load, and as soon as it does finish loading, we're going to click on it to open it, and at this point you're welcome to close the browser and from here go ahead and hit run and then just agree as soon as you're comfortable and this may take just a little bit longer but it's going to ask you if you want to enable controller support and we're going to hit yes just like we did on our computer at home and then hit close it should open up parsec automatically and this may take just a moment or two to, to operate And just like at home, it's going to ask you to sign in. Now this time you should have an existing account because we set up Parsec at home. So sign in with that existing account. And then click the login button when you're ready. Now for this setup, it is absolutely essential that you hit the enable hosting button. And that's it. You actually do not need to change any of these settings up here. Um, as far as controlling your stream, that's all done in the settings of the Parsec app that's on your home computer. So you don't have to do it on the server. And we can go ahead and close this. Now, to get out of this window, you're going to hold down Alt, Shift, and the number, or the letter W. And when you do that, so Alt, Shift, W, it's going to make that screen a lot smaller. And then we're going to hold down Control, Alt, Shift and that basically releases our mouse so that we're out of that window. Now for gaming, it's very important that you don't close the window entirely, so don't hit this X. Go ahead and just minimize it. And the reason that we do that is that if you don't take that step, your gaming session, so if you close it, for example, your gaming session is gonna quit after 30 minutes. 
So you wanna leave that open so that there's some activity that keeps things going. And then on your home computer, go ahead and open up Parsec again. We're gonna to go to play. And you can see that our Snooze computer now shows up as an option. And we're just gonna hit the play button. It's gonna connect across the internet to that cloud server. And uh, basically you can see it. Now you'll notice the difference right off the bat. It's not blurry, um, it's very responsive, so there's no more mouse drifting, there's no more blurriness. It's basically ready to go, and you're ready to go ahead and start gaming at this point. So you see on the cloud server I've installed two different games. I could jump right into one of those and start playing. It's completely ready to play. So again, I wanna reiterate that that last step of basically installing the Snooze app on, on the, uh, I'm sorry, installing the, the Parsec app on the Snooze computer is something that you have to do every single time that you boot up the Snooze cloud computer. Now it just takes a few extra minutes, although it is a little bit annoying, but that's part of you know getting this experience as good as it is right now. And as long as you plan ahead a little bit, shouldn't be too inconvenient. You, you just should know that you need roughly 15 to 20 minutes before you wanna play games to get everything booted up and then sign in. And from here, you can just you know have a really good experience. If you're curious about what the gaming looks like on here, take a look at some of our other videos. We've showcased Snooze quite a bit. And when you're done, you're just gonna hit Alt and F4 on your keyboard, and that's gonna take you out of the streaming session. So we're back on our home computer here, and that's it. You've basically finished everything up, and uh, hopefully you feel very confident in getting everything set up and using Parsec and Snooze together, and you should be able to have a really good cloud gaming experience with them. I hope that you enjoyed that video. Be sure to check us out on social media. You can start by going to twitter.com slash flickstick, and once you get there, be sure to hit that follow button so that you get updated every time that we do something new. And in addition to that, we have a brand new website over at flickstick.com, and when you go there, you'll see that we have a lot of information for you. So we've got all kinds of articles about game streaming and cloud gaming, and we're your destination for everything that you could possibly want to know about those industries. On top of that, if you want to stay on top of everything that we're doing, be sure to subscribe to us there as well. So enter your name, your email, and hit subscribe so that you get updated every time we release something new on our website. And then lastly, be sure to head over to youtube.com slash flickstick and once you get there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you get updated every time we release a new video. And until next time, you guys have a good one.